Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday and welcome to Board Game Brunch, my monthly Q&A right here on the Dice Tower. My name is Crystal Pisano, and I'm so happy to be joining you all this fine Sunday morning. I will admit I'm a little bit tired. Uh, last night we did a karaoke night on the internet uh, over on the Board Game Blitz Twitch channel. And then I, after that, also played more Animal Crossing, which is kind of my current obsession. Um, I'm really, really enjoying Animal Crossing. Um, if any of you play that game, you should definitely let me know it in the chat. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to be joining you all this morning. Uh, apologies that the stream was not scheduled in advance. That is my fault for forgetting to have Tom or Roy schedule it on the channel earlier this week, but I'm here now, so that's all that matters. Um, if any of you have any questions for me, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, and I'll just say up front that yes, the finale of Picard aired this week. Yes, I would be willing to talk about my thoughts without any spoilers if someone's interested in that. Um, good morning, Ambi. Thanks for hanging out. Um, also, if anyone, or if I don't get a lot of viewers because this wasn't scheduled in advance, I might just play some games online. <laughs> I have this set up that um, a board game arena has been a little bit rough this morning because it's very, very busy. This is not a criticism or judgment at all. Honestly, I think the people at Board Game Arena are doing a spectacular job um, of maintaining when they're getting literally thousands of new viewers. Uh, hi, Karen. Thanks for being here. Um, yeah, so I, if I don't get a ton of questions, oh, I, I think that's, uh, I need to fix this. So it's actually, so y'all can see the whole thing in the window. Let me slide that. Ooh, it's, that's kind of, that's all right, probably. We'll see how that looks. Um, oh, good. Hi, Thomas. Good morning. Um, so I am answer, happy to answer questions. Um, but I'm also possibly going to play some games on Board Game Arena, because why not? Um, so let's see here. I, I'm going to hop into a game, and then I'll just take questions as they come, I guess. Um, we'll see if Board Game Arena will work. Uh, if any of you are on Board Game Arena, you're actually, you'd be welcome to join me um, if you can. I imagine it's pretty hard to... I'm just going to start a game rather than hopping into someone else's. We'll see if this works. Yeah, there it's board game arena is very, very busy. Uh, the basic painter, what do you think of tabletop simulator on Steam? I don't think I've played anything on tabletop simulator before. I've played on Tabletopia. In fact, yesterday morning, I actually played a game of Wingspan on Tabletopia and it worked great. The interface works really well. I will say, the only downside to that, and this is a very small complaint truly, is that because you're manipulating pieces in a digital space instead of a physical space, it just takes longer to do things like draw a card, move your cube, you know, do all the things that you would normally do with your hands. It takes longer when you're doing them with a mouse. And so our game of Wingspan took, I wanna say like close to three hours. Um, not because anyone was acting particularly slow, just because the way the interface works, it's it slows the natural flow of things down. Honestly, though, it was really, really fun, um, and I enjoyed it a lot. So I think if you are interested, Tabletopia is a really good platform to check out. Um, there are some games that you have to be uh, have like a premium or a elevated membership to play, but you don't have to have that for all of the games on there. Uh, lots of people coming into the chat. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Ruby. Um, hi, Halo. Good morning, everyone. Um, okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to open this up to other players. In theory, if you are on Board Game Arena and want to join in, you might be able to, um, but I'm not going to go crazy with anything. I'm just going to open it up and see how quickly it fills up and start a game of Coloretto. Um, it is a public information game, so even if you were watching my screen, I don't think you'd get any advantage if you were playing with me. Um, oh. Oh, good, Karen's hopping in. <laughs> and I, I, it looks like you have a bad reputation, but I'm imagining that's probably because of all of the problems that uh, Board Game Arena has been happening, been, been, been having, <laughs> not happening. Oh, it's morning and I have my coffee right here, but I haven't drank any of it yet. And of course, 
I uh, I have a Picard mug with me. Not Star Trek Picard. This is Mirror Universe Picard. Uh, beefy arm Picard. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, we're full. Let's start the game. I don't know if the other people are um, in the chat here or not, but if, if so, hello. And if not, well, we'll just play with them anyway. Okay. Yeah, they've been they've been putting out messages that they had some problems this morning. Ah, oh, coffee is good. Come on, gray card. Um, so I am still answering questions. So if anyone has questions for me, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, let's see, brown. Nobody wants brown. Um, Jeremiah says, so Tabletopia is a sandbox table simulator without any rules enforcement. Am I correct? Yes, you are correct. Um, Tabletopia has all of the pieces and has the rule book uploaded into the platform itself, but, um, it does not enforce anything. You're just physically manipulating the pieces on a digital table. So if you do not know, okay, well, I'm definitely taking this row. I'm not waiting for another card. We're just going to take it now before someone else does. Um, if you are not familiar with the rules of the game, it is difficult to use. But if you already know the rules to a game, it's really, really great. Um, so, oh, Halo, you're very welcome. I'm happy to provide whatever semblance of, you know, uh, niceness and positivity that I can. Um I like that these gray cards are coming out. That is making me happy because I started with a gray card in my, oh, I wonder, it must, this, let me make it so you all, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it so you can see much better, but I'm going to try and make this, I'm going to slide this behind. Hold on. Slide this, whoop, no, too far. Okay, it's my turn. Let's see, pick a card. Orange. I don't want that. Um, okay, so then we're going to zoom this in a little bit. Okay, so that's a little bit weird looking, but now things are a tiny bit bigger. I guess actually if I, sorry folks, I'm going to try and make it so y'all can see what's going on a little bit more clearly. So I'm just trying to modify this a little bit. I know that it's kind of like weirdly behind the logos now, but I want you all to be able to see what's going on. <clears throat> Let's see. Well... None of those are necessarily bad for me. Brown. Okay. So both of those top two rows would be good for me. So I'm okay with either of them. And I may just, let's see. What's Karen going to take? Karen's going to put a pink card somewhere. All right, so do we want the orange and the pink or just, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and take that. That's not a bad play. Um, so, yeah, I figured as much, uh, Karen. I knew, I because I recognized the username because that's the same as your uh, Twitch username, if I remember correctly. Um, so if, in case anyone doesn't know how to play Coloretto, um, it's really simple. On your turn, you, e you either draw a card or take a row. Um, so right now I'm going to draw a card. So I pick a card. It shows me the card. It's just a plus two points card. So I'm going to put it into one of the rows. Um, if you choose to take a row, then you take all of the cards that are already in that row and you don't get to draw any more cards for the rest of the round. Um, so uh, and then at the end of the game, you'll score positive points for the three colors that you have the most cards of and negative points for any other cards that you have. Oh, I kind of want that wild. Mm. You know what? I'm just going to do it. I don't know if that was a good move or not, but I'm just going to do it. Um, so right now I'm scoring positive points. You can see for my, here I can show you my cursor, my gray cards my blue and my orange, and then my pink is giving me negative. Um, but eventually, like if I picked up another pink card, it, they would score positive and one of the other colors would score negative. And then I have these two wilds that are basically, they get factored into whatever would give me the most points. 
Oh, I kind of like the blue, but uh, Karen is going to want that blue also. So we're going to put it over here so it's less tempting. Um, oh, good morning, Trevin. You should have got, yes, you definitely should have gotten a microphone out so you could have sang with us last night. Uh, for those of you who did not get to join uh, Ambie and I for karaoke last night here on the internet, you missed out. We had like almost 40 people watching on Twitch. We were playing a program called Twitch Sings. Um, interesting. Uh, and it was so much fun. <laughs> I really, 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 really enjoyed it. Um, this, this round is not going as well for me. Who is left? Who hasn't? Um... So Sydney and Kay and Mom have already taken a row. So Eiffel doesn't necessarily want either of those either. But I kind of want the gray card. I'm going to pick a card and see what happens. Pink would be good for me. Uh, pink would be good for Eiffel as well, though. So we're going to put it here and see what happens. I think they'll just take that row, probably. Okay, yeah, they did. So here's where I can risk it. Because if I draw another card, I have to t I'm have to. i going to have to take it no matter what. We're just going to do it. Okay, that's not horrible. That's that's not the worst. We're okay. Um, let's see here. Oh, Shader, good evening to you. And good morning from here. Um, you must be overseas. Uh, I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday evening. I assume Sunday evening. Based on the way the world works, sometimes I forget. Like right now, I know it's tomorrow in Australia. Oh, it's my turn. I'm so sorry, everyone in the game who is waiting on me as I'm just blabbering. Um, uh, Halo says that he played this game last summer and it's a fun filler game. Yeah, I think this one is really, it's a nice, quick little filler. Um, Radio Raven says... Come on, we'll just have to upload Sheriff of Nottingham 2nd Edition to this program. Uh, let's see, I kind of just want the brown and the plus two. Yeah, we're just going to take it. Um, with all these endless pushbacks, the latest pushback being a very good reason, of course. I did not know that Come on was doing a 2nd Edition of Sheriff of Nottingham. Um, I... I uh, I was unaware of that, I guess. I have the first edition of the game. I'm curious if there are any differences in this between the that and the second edition. Um, am I going to do karaoke again soon? The answer to that question is probably. We do not have anything scheduled yet, but Ambie and I did talk about doing a karaoke night again pretty soon. Um, so for those of you who are interested in joining us for karaoke, um, you are going to want to follow Board Game Blitz on Twitch because that is where that is going to happen. Um, <laughs> as much as I'm sure Tom would love for us to uh, <laughs> play or to sing karaoke here on the Dice Towers YouTube channel, I don't think we can do that. <laughs> so... Uh, let's see. How are we doing so far? We're doing okay. Things could get ugly fast, but we've got some options at least. I don't want that row. That's a good row for Eiffel. Um, let's see here. Pink card. Mm. I'll put the pink with the blue, actually. This could end up being bad, but. See, and I don't necessarily need the gray, although I guess then my wilds could apply to the browns if I took another gray. But two of those cards would be positive for me and one would be negative. That's not horrible. I'm just gonna take it. I'm uh, yeah, it's okay. Not the best play, but. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna scroll back up in the chat. Um, oh, I don't have to scroll that far, it's just right there. Uh, Gareth says, yes, it's nearly 6 a.m. in New Zealand. Yeah, wow, that's early in the morning. And it is Sunday evening in fin Finland. Very cool, Shader. Um, yeah, it's 9.45 a.m. here in Las Vegas. Ooh, this is the last round of the game. Uh, I have to catch up to Eiffel. I don't want a green card. I know that. Yellow is also bad for me. Let's see. But yellow and green together are not good for anyone. 
So we're going to put them together. Uh, Jeremiah asks, Crystal, what's your go-to filler game? What do you bring on most occasions that you feel you could play games at? That, uh, so I actually have quite a few filler games, I think, that are kind of my go-tos. Um, there are a few titles from Button Shy that I love to have on hand at all times. Let's see, are any of these good for me? The gray and the pink are good. So I'm just going to take them. Um, so, uh, from Button Shy specifically, Tussie Mussy by Elizabeth Hargrave, I really, really love. Sprawlopolis, uh, I don't know the designer of that one offhand, I apologize, but Sprawlopolis is really good. Um, and both of those are from Button Shy, so they're 18 card games. So they're really small, they take up very little space. Um, I have a lot of other games in my quiver, which is that, like, box. Oh, the dogs are coming in. Hi. Hi, puppies. Do you want to say hello? Hold on, I'll tilt the camera down so everybody can say hi. Look at my mess of an office and say hi to Lana and Sterling. Oh gosh, here, Lana, come here. You want to say hi? Yeah, my office is a big mess, huh? Yeah. I got some pillows on the floor so when they come in here they have somewhere to hang out. Oh my goodness, you're so sweet. Um, so let's see, other games that are usually in my quiver. Ah, oh, Sydney won. Two points. That was a good game though. All right, we're gonna go back to the main site. I'm gonna switch this back over to my Q&A setup temporarily. Um, so that way, um, but if anyone does wanna play a game, I'm willing to play more. Um, so let's see, filler games. Well, okay, in my quiver, things that I usually have, no thanks is one of my go-tos because it's really easy to teach and it's quick to play. Um, a lot of roll and writes um, are filler games for me, um, and I've laminated a bunch of my roll and write games. So I have like laminated sheets and then markers, um, and so those are usually pretty quick to pull out and play as well. Um, Gone's shown clever, doppelt so clever, um, uh, twenty one, knock mall. There's the English names for a bunch of those, but I have the older, I have the German editions of most of those things. Um, so, and I think, I think one of my new favorite uh, filler games, well, when I say think, it's not, I have played this game, but I haven't used it as a filler. I just got it in the mail this past week. Dun, da, da, da. I have my own copy of The Crew. Do you guys want to see me do a live unboxing of The Crew? <laughs> I've never done an unboxing before on my Q&A, but uh, I haven't even taken the plastic off of it yet. I'm so happy that I own this now. I got to play it on The Cruise and I love it so much. And I know you're hearing this from everybody right now. Like The Crew is so good, The Crew is so good. Well, it is. If you like trick-taking games, it it is just really fun and it's really quick. So each game only lasts like a few minutes. So it's very, very, very uh, quick to pull out, easy to play. Again, though, you need to like trick-taking games, I think, to like this. So if you all want to see me unbox it live here on the stream, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I will not bore you with that because I know not everybody likes unboxings and I've never done one before, so I won't even do it right. It's just going to be me holding it up in the air as I rip the plastic off. Um, Kathleen asks, do the puppies demand attention when I play games? Uh, her cat seems to know when she wants to play something and demands attention. Um, yeah, kind of. They, um, so Lana and Sterling are usually pretty chill when we're playing games. They'll just hang out on the couch or the floor or wherever. Maybe um, is a little bit more demanding. She likes to be on someone's lap or on the table. <laughs> like actually the table we're playing games on. She wants to be on top of it. Um, she's kind of like a cat in that way, which is odd. Um, she's a poodle mix, but she's uh, got some Welsh terrier in her, which I think makes her adventurous. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, she wants attention when we're playing games and will sometimes get a little bit whiny if we're not paying attention to her. So um, yeah, the dogs do get a little bit bored, uh, especially like if we have a big game night and we have lots of people over to the house, obviously we're not doing that right now because of social distancing, but 
in the past and in the future when we've done when we will be doing that. Um, the dogs will often like get really excited when people show up and then eventually kind of get tired of the fact that lots of people are in the house because it'll get late and they're like, okay, we want to go to bed now and we don't care that you're playing games. <laughs> so sometimes they'll just go upstairs and climb into bed, um, which is funny to me. Um, so yeah, they don't mind per se, but it is what it is. Um, let's see. Halo says, one of my favorite filler games is How Doc Mall. It's a cool card game. I hope I wrote the name right. The game right. Uh, cool. I'll have to look that one up. Uh, Martin says, Zero Down by Knizia is a very good filler. I've never heard of that one, so I might have to look that up as well. Uh, and we've had at least three people say that they want to see a live unboxing. So, uh, let's see. How do I get the plastic off effectively? Um, we're going to actually use a fork that I have sitting on my desk. So let's see here. I'm going to try and do this on camera without stabbing myself. <laughs> That's We don't need to see me bleed live on stream. <laughs> All right, we're ripping the plastic off. Well, we're ripping some of the plastic off. All right, plastic away. <laughs> That's why my office is a mess. Okay, so ooh, box. Pretty. Okay. The drama. <laughs> All right, so here in the box for the crew, we have a rule book, which in case you weren't sure what it is, it just says rule book really big on the front. Oh, oh, hold on. Okay, this might be, I was, I was making fun of it because I was like, why in the world would you put rule book on the front? Like everybody knows it's the rule book, of course, but look at this. There's also a log book on the back. Start reading here for the rule book. So in the rule book, they've got nice little pictures of the components, game materials, some quick reference stuff on the sides, which looks pretty nice. Even though I played this on the cruise, I've never read the rule book. So this is neat to see. Uh, this looks like a really nicely laid out rule book, I would say, uh, pretty neat. Okay, but let's, I'm curious about this log book that's on the back. Um, I'm gonna read the flavor text to you all. So prepare to be bored, maybe. After years of discussion, the International Astronomical Union decided on August 24th, 2006 to withdraw Pluto's status as the ninth planet in our solar system. From that day on, there were only eight planets in our solar system, Neptune being the eighth and the furthest away from the sun. Years later, however, a sensational theory emerged that a huge, hitherto unknown heavenly body must be positioned at the edge of our solar system. The origin of these theories was the data transmitted by the spacecraft Voyager 2, and then later by New Horizons. Unusual distortions in their measurements and phased interruptions in their transmissions left scientists perplexed. Initially dismissed by their peers as a figment of their imagination, many skeptics eventually became convinced by the evidence over time. However, the data ultimately proved inconclusive. Even though a cadre of scientists had thoroughly examined it, it still had not provided any concrete evidence of the theory. Out of options, the research team built around Dr. Markow created Project Nautilus, a manned mission that would be sent to verify the existence of Planet Nine. After years of research and countless setbacks, they had finally developed the technology to carry out the mission. And now the real question is, with what crew? Are you ready to join Project Nautilus? Volunteers needed. Okay, that's that's pretty good flavor text, I have to say. Okay, so they have a log book where you like mark down who's playing, how many attempts it takes to pass a specific level, I guess. Um, yeah, you fill in the names of the crew, the dates of your first and last rounds of the game and how many attempts you needed. The X indicates which crew field you should use during each mission to record your attempts. Interesting. Oh, so for, yeah, for each level. Oh my gosh, look at this, friends. This is neat. I didn't know this was in here. And it shows you what the rule for each level is on the side here too as a reference. I mean, I'm assuming that's how people knew what the levels were. Obviously that had to be here somewhere, but I just never looked at the rule book, so. Huh. I am impressed. This is really neat. Okay, 
So the logbook. Oh, and there's an epilogue. So once you beat all 50 levels, there's an epilogue you can read. I'm not going to read that because that seems like spoilers, kind of. Okay, well, let's continue the unboxing, shall we? All right, we have a punch board that one of the things is not there. Oh, maybe that's what all these pieces that are just loose in here are. Yeah, there's a bunch of little, here, there's a bunch of little squares that maybe we're all together on there. I'm, I'm not sure, but it kind of looks like that might be what was there. It looks like those are about the same amount that would have gone in that spot, theoretically, together. I'm not sure. Um, and then we've got some little pieces. You've got your first player marker that is a little standee that I'm going to punch out and put somewhere eventually. And then you've got two different decks of cards. They are identical, except for the fact that one is little and one is big. Um, backs are different as well. So these are the cards that players will hold in their hands. And these are the cards that will help determine the rules for the level. Um, and Sterling keeps barking. I do not know at what, but... Um, He's just angry about something. And okay, so that is, he's very angry about something. I apologize for the dog barking friends. Uh, all right, so that was my official unboxing of my new copy of The Crew. I'm going to close it back up. Swoop. Ta-da, The Crew. Uh, I'm bummed that I cannot play this right now because I do not have enough players. It does say that there is a two-player variant so you can play it with two, but um, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's, in t I mean, everyone, I don't, I, I might check out the two player variant, but truly I really liked playing it with three or more. So um, it looks like either my chat has frozen or no one is chatting right now. <laughs> can someone say something in the chat to make it, uh, make, let me, oh, okay, good. Something just came in. Perfect. Um, just wanted to make sure. Do, 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 do. All right, I'm going to, let's see. Uh, Richard asks, no notion of a solo game for the crew in the rules. Uh, I don't know if you were being cheeky or not, Richard, uh, but no, not to my knowledge. It's a trick-taking game, and I don't know of any solo trick-taking games. If there are any, and you all know about them, you should let me know, but I don't think that's possible. <laughs> Two-player trick-taking games definitely exist. Fox in the Forest being um, the most famous uh, recent release in that regard. And I, by recent, I mean last few years. Um, but I'm sure there might be others that I'm unaware of. Um, let's see here. Uh, Radio Raven says, by the Fantasy Flight's Cosmic Encounter Duels comes out, by the time it comes out, oh, scrolling by, uh, the first expansion will probably be ready for release. I don't know. I, sorry, I missed, I'm not certain what you were saying there. Uh, Kathleen says, I've always felt poodles are rather cat-like, especially small poodles. Well, that fits maybe really well she is yeah um the basic painter says it's 12 50 p.m in north bay ontario and starting a game of tiny epic quests here in a few minutes tiny epic quest is one of my favorite games i love it very much it is definitely my favorite tiny epic game um because it's like zelda it's zelda the board game basically without being licensed it's great um nino cooney 2 was a good filler i did not there's a board or card game called Nino, Nino Kuni 2. I know of the video game series, but I do not know of any board games or card games. So that's pretty cool. Um, Christian says there are nine extra card in the big one, the four rockets and the five reminder cards back are the same with the exception of the reminder card. Oh, that's right. Oh yeah. I guess I could have unwrapped the cards to show you all those. I'm not <laughs> clearly Clearly, I'm not an expert unboxer because <laughs> I was just like, here's a deck of cards, throw it in the garbage. No, like <laughs> I didn't do anything with the cards. Um, um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, Karen says that she has not played the crew yet, but is intrigued. I honestly, so here's the thing, friends. Yes, there is a ton of hype around the crew, especially here at the Dice Tower because a bunch of people played it at the cruise and a bunch of people played it at Dice Tower West a month ago. And... I get that the hype train is annoying. It, it is. It can be. It's, it's annoying to me too sometimes. But the crew is just one of those games that does everything right. It's quick. It's reasonably easy to learn. 
It's really fun. Uh, it's cooperative, which for me is a plus. I know that that fact sometimes is a negative for other people, but I like the fact that it's cooperative. It's really quick to play um, and it just feels different. And I like that. And it's it's just, it's great. Um, I would say I would never recommend The Crew as someone's first trick-taking game. Um, I'm not saying that that's impossible. You could definitely learn it. But I think having a reasonable baseline knowledge of how trick-taking game strategy works um, is beneficial. Because in the crew, the thing that your brain has to adjust to is in a normal trick-taking game, you are mitigating, you want, you definitely want to take a certain number of tricks usually. Sometimes that's a very high number, sometimes it's a very low number, sometimes it's somewhere in the middle, and you're able to get rid of cards in your hand that will help that will help or hinder you in those goals. In the crew, it's not always obvious how many tricks you're going to need to take to help you achieve your goal. Because sometimes a certain player has to take a certain card and you might not want to win tricks later so they can take it. Or you might want to win tricks later so they don't have to take other things. It's it's hard to explain without visuals but it's just really, really neat. Um, so um, let's see here. Rat's Tail 91 says, hey, hi. Uh, and Ivo says, sup. So I will say, sup. You gotta do that. I think you can't say sup without the head, the head tilt, right? Like, I'm pretty sure that's a rule. Uh, Pamela Wagner, Pam, hi Pam, says, I just got mine too. Can't wait to play. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, let's see here. Halo, we were in awe of your unboxing. <laughs> I doubt that seriously. <laughs> that was the most impromptu and unprofessional unboxing you'll ever see on the Dice Tower. So um, I know that they, they've split off the unboxings into their own channel. Uh, and Mike Delizio is doing all the unboxings on the separate channel now. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to show up on that channel anytime soon, I don't think. <laughs> Uh, oh, April says that there is a great solo version of the trick-taking game Whist on Board Game Geek. Uh, Oni, oh gosh, I can't read the first word there. O-N-E-O-N-T-A, Whist, a solo trick-taking game. That is fascinating. Uh, I have no idea how that would work, but I, I, I figured that that might exist. I just didn't know of any. So thank you for telling me about it. Pretty cool. Um, Mohammed asks... Have you ever turned down a game because it was too garish? Uh, and for him, that was terraforming Mars. I don't know is the first thing that comes to mind. I think I've turned down games, like I've turned down the opportunity to play games for just about every reason you could think of. And coming up with a specific example of like a game being too garish, doesn't necessarily strike anything in my brain. But like, I've turned down games because I was too tired, or I just wasn't in the mood, or the game was going to be too long, or too complicated, or too simple. Like, every reason that you could think of for why you wouldn't want to play a game, I've probably had that reason for not playing something at some point. Um, I've actually never played Terraforming Mars, which a lot of people are surprised by. It's not that I've specifically avoided it. I just haven't played it. Does that make sense? I think you all have experienced this at some point where like there's a game that it seems like everyone has played and years have passed and everybody has definitely played that game at some point and you just never have. And it's not that I've been specifically avoiding it. I just haven't played it. I will at some point. Um, although I will admit I had a little bit of fun on the cruise uh, at one of the live shows uh, ribbing Stephen Bonacore by telling him that I'd never played it before. <laughs> so that was fun for me. Um, uh, Karen is telling Jeremiah uh, about her puppos, Candy, a Pomeranian, and Sasha, a Chihuahua, and they're both rescues and super cuddly and sweet. Uh, that is awesome. I love hearing about doggos. Uh, mine are not in the office anymore. Otherwise, I'd show them to you again, but they left, so. Uh, oh, Ivo says that Rado loved the two-player variant of the crew. That's good to know. Um, let's see. Uh, 
Um, uh, rat's tail, that is not a question that I can answer for you. Um, I am not part of the core team uh, here on the channel. Uh, I am one of the contributors um, from afar. So I, uh, I, I don't have an answer for that for you. I apologize. April says that she wasn't interested in terraforming Mars until someone brought it to game night and she really enjoyed it. I honestly, I think I probably would like it. Um, but I just, yeah, I haven't played it yet. All right, the questions are slowing down, friends. So I might start another game of Coloretto uh, if that interests anyone. I uh, I knew this stream wasn't scheduled in advance. And so uh, people might not, might not have known it was happening today. And I do apologize. Again, that was my fault for not having uh, Tom and Roy schedule it. But let's go back to, um, oh, moving the background, not the browser. Let's, oh gosh, there we go. I will zoom this back in if it makes sense in a minute. I guess I could have just left it, but I don't want it to look unprofessional. Um, no problem, Rat's Tail. Sorry that I, I can't help with that. Um, I uh, I just don't. I'm not certain what the process is, and I don't want to misspeak. So, alrighty, let's see here. Let's do another game of Colorado. Um, so, if anybody is on Board Game Arena and wants to play, I'm going to be opening up the table shortly. I'm gonna wait a few seconds because I know there's a lag on YouTube and so I want you all to theoretically be able to join in when it shows up. Um, you can see my username is Dabo Girl. Of course, it's Star Trek related. No one's surprised about that. <laughs> um, all right, I'm opening up the table and we'll see if uh, it goes through. The Board Game Arena has been doing a great job of handling the crush of people that has been coming in. I think I clicked it. It's uh. We might have to refresh the page. Okay, cool. Uh, Rat's Tail says uh, she, that they've got a design question. What are your thoughts about rolling dice for movement in a hack and slash dungeon crawler? I will say that rolling dice for movement in just about any game is not often a good choice. Um, hey, we've got three people. I want four people though. Does it, wait, do I have four? It looks like I only have three, but I'm gonna load it again to make sure. Oh, I do have four, okay. Um, rolling dice for movement, especially if like people can roll very different things like one person rolling a one and one person rolling a six can directly and everything i'm saying is my personal opinion for the record everything i'm saying right now just my personal opinion um so i don't want anyone to think that i'm some kind of expert um on game design i'm not um but uh there's a little bit too much potential luck in rolling dice for movement, in my opinion, in a game that is intended for adults. Um, I think in children's games, there is some neat value there because it helps kids with counting um, and, let's see, blue. Well, the blue with the pink, I guess, I don't know. Um, there, there's value in that mechanic, but I think there is a reason why a lot of old board games have that mechanic and a lot of new board games do not. And I think that is because game designers have realized that it is not ideal, that there are way, lots of better ways to uh, do movement in a game. In this, again, in my opinion, from my observations personally. So um, yeah, that's kind of what, oh, and we've got more questions in the chat. Okay, we're gonna, hmm. I want that gray card. Dang, but I want three cards. We're gonna take it. I'm just taking it, I want the gray. This is a bad, that was a bad play on my part probably, but um, okay, let's see here. Uh, James says, first time really getting to hear and see you. Well, that's exciting. Uh, what are some of your top games or where can I see which games you lean toward? Have a good stream. Uh, well, the best place to hear about what I like 
to play would be to listen to my podcast, <laughs> probably. Um, there are now over 100 episodes of Board Game Blitz available for anyone to listen to. And I would say that that is a pretty good place to start if you want to know about my taste in games. Um, we've been doing that. F Ooh, I kind of... Oh, no, definitely don't want to put it down there. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd say the podcast is the best place to learn about my tasting games. Um, also, uh, Eric Summer and I do a live stream here on the Dice Tower every two weeks on Wednesday nights. In fact, our next one will be this coming Wednesday. Um, so, oh man, we already had one row taken. Uh, orange. I'm gonna put it right there. Um, so yeah, if you watch Dice Tower tonight, that might give you an idea as well. But really, my podcast is probably the best place <laughs> to learn about my tasting games. So um, Board Game Blitz, you got 101 almost, uh, wait, yeah, episode 101 just came out um, on Thursday. So you've got lots and lots of stuff to listen to there. Um, let's see here. And thank you for wishing me a good stream. Uh, it has been fun so far. Uh, Jeremiah asks, what lifestyle game do you or have you played, whether it's because of long-term collectability or just lots of gameplay to master or because of competitiveness? Uh, oh, I definitely want that row. That is mine. Um, I don't think I've ever picked up any lifestyle games. Um, it's just not something that I tend to lean toward. I will play a specific game multiple times over a few months, like a campaign. Um, some friends and I have done campaigns in a few different games. Um, we did uh, Star Wars Imperial Assault for a while, like years ago now, gosh, that was, when did it come out? It came out in 2015, probably. Um, and I don't think any of the expansions had been released when we were playing that. So, um, ooh, I'm gonna want that blue. Oh, a couple other people might be interested in it too, though. Um, uh, Arcadia Quest, I played through all the base game campaign of that. Um, I've been saying um a lot because I'm trying to think and my brain is not uh, clicking at full capacity because I haven't drank all my coffee yet. Ooh, that top row is good for me. Oh, it's also good for Yazuru. Um, we're just going to take it. I don't want them to have it and it's good for me, so I'm taking it. Um, but yeah, as far as lifestyle games go, things like, uh, collectible card games or living card games or things like that, I've never gotten into any of them. I don't tend to collect a lot of stuff for any single game. It's just not the way I tend to interact with games. So, um... Are you all... I didn't zoom the screen in this time. Are you all able to see what's happening in the game at least reasonably well enough? I want to make sure that you all aren't uh, completely in the dark. Um, let's see, how are we doing points wise? Miguel, Miguel already has four green and he's going to possibly get a fifth. Um, I'm not, I'm, last game I got second place. We'll see if I can do better this time, but it doesn't look like that might happen. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Caesar says OMG in the chat. And I don't know why you're saying OMG, but OMG right back at you. <laughs> um, let's see. Mohammed says the best thing about Gloomhaven was its modifier deck. More games should have it. Um, cool. Yeah, I, uh, I've owned Gloomhaven since, oh man, all of these are looking bad for me. I do not like any of my options right now. Ugh. Well, actually... Yellow isn't going to be horrible, so I guess if we have a couple with yellow cards in it, if I have to take a single card. Oh, the screen seems good. Perfect. I'm not going to modify it then so it doesn't look weird. Um, if you all can see what's going on, then that's fine. I might end up... I want that blue... Oh, well, no, I'm not getting that, apparently. Um, James says, stealing this question, what game would you gift to the world? A game that you would give to everyone. Oh, man, these are crummy options. So Ivy and Yazuro have already taken rows. Miguel is definitely going to want the brown row. So let's hope for something good for the other one. Yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Okay. 
Let's put it there then, I guess. This is, oh, that was bad, 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 bad. Uh, okay. That was a very bad play on my part. Um, okay, so a gift, a game that I would gift to everyone. So here's the part of this question that kind of trips up my brain. If you gifted a game to everyone and everyone owned the same game, then no one would ever, like, there would be nothing unique about everyone having it. Does that make sense? Like if you gave, like, so I think the thing that my brain goes to would be quick filler games that would be easily approachable. So things like No Thanks that I mentioned earlier. But if everybody owned a copy of No Thanks, it wouldn't be that exciting because everybody would own a copy of it. So I think in this regard, I would have to pick a game that would make sense for everyone to own, that they could play on their own if they wanted to. So I think my pick for this would actually not be a filler game or a multiplayer game. It would be a game that you can play solo. So I answer this question with one of my favorite games ever, and that is Legacy of Dragonhold. Uh, I think everyone should play that game and it's really fun to play solo. So if I could gift everybody a single game, that is the game that I would gift to them. I am not liking how this is going, friends. It is... Oof, not good. Why? Oh my gosh, I hate all of this. This is going bad for me. Um, so yeah, I think Legacy of Dragonhold is what I would gift to everyone. And I don't know if you all would like that suggestion or not, but that's what I'm gonna say. Um, let's see here. Screen seems good, screen is good, perfect. Um, Jeremiah says that one of his favorite reasons to watch Dice Tower tonight is the live games. Well, that's awesome to hear. Oh, no, they took the rose. Oh, friends, I am so screwed right now. <laughs> uh, yuck. Yuck. This is bad. This is really bad. I'm losing. I'm going to get last place for sure. There's nothing I can do about this at this point. So, uh-oh. We're gonna reload the game here just in case. Okay. Um, hi, Kabuki Kid. All right. Um, Mohammed says the Arkham Horror LCG is his lifestyle game. Um, oh no, for the one you'd give gift to everyone. You'd give everyone two copies of everything, including yourself. There can never be enough Arkham Horror living card game. Um, yeah, I, I've played the Arkham Horror Living Card Game and it was really fun. So I, I think that's a good choice too. Uh, April says Legacy of Dragonhold was really fun, but also brutal if you mess up. Um, you know what we're going to do? What are we going to do here? I'm just going to do this. I'm already losing this game. So gosh, it's really ugly right now. <laughs> it's so bad. I'm losing so horribly. Uh, this is Coloretto, Kabuki Kid. Um, and I this, do not look at how I'm playing as how to play this game because I have made some... Admittedly, the card draws have been bad for me too, but it is not going well at all. I am... Oof. It's bad. <laughs> Hi, Amanda. Uh, Kabuki Kid says, I want there to be more like Re Legacy of Dragon Holt. Nikki is an underrated writer. I 100% agree. I, I know that Nikki is working on some other games. Uh, Nikki doesn't work for Fantasy Flight anymore, but is working on other games on their own or through other publishers. Um, and I really, truly hope that there is another story game like Legacy of Dragon Holt coming. Um, I know that, um... Calvin Wong has been helping them with something um, story-wise, writing-wise, that's related to gaming. Um, they've talked about that on public, like publicly on Twitter. Um, but I don't know what or when or who. Um, so I, I really hope that it's another game in the same style. Oh, this is the last round. Look at my score. <laughs> this is the worst game of Colorado for me ever. I'm pretty sure. Oh gosh. What a mess. Like, how do I even salvage this? I would need literally, like to get even a, close to anyone else, I'm gonna need like two pinks and an orange or a blue. Two pinks and a blue is what I would like. 
Well, two points is not going to help me at this point. Even four points wouldn't help me at this point. Um, okay, uh, Karen asks, what is the last game that you played? Well, I'm going to say Wingspan because I played that yesterday morning on Tabletopia with some friends. Um, oh, gosh, a yellow card. Uh, I'm very not happy with this right now. This has been horrible draws for me. I just... Uh, sure, let's do that. And then give me the brown one because, of course, you're going to give me the brown one. They don't want the yellow, though. Well, they're going to get a yellow anyway. <laughs> I got a few more points. Oh, that's bad. Very, very bad score. I lost a whole bunch of uh, stuff there. Um, sorry, I got distracted. Um, so yeah, Wingspan, Yesterday Morning, Tabletopia, which is a, a, you can download it from Steam or play in a browser for Tabletopia, and it works pretty well. I'm going to switch back over to my Q&A setup. Um, <clears throat> and I, I mentioned this earlier, but it, the... It's really, really neat. It's a virtual tabletop that you can just manipulate the pieces on. It does not enforce the rules, though. So if you don't know the rules for a game, it can be difficult to use. But like for Wingspan, which I've played a whole bunch of times, it was wonderful. It worked really well. Uh, I may have kicked Nick Murphy's butt in that game. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, so yeah, Wingspan, last game I played. Uh, yeah, and I've been playing a bunch of games here on Board Game Arena over the past couple of weeks. Um, if you don't have a board game arena account, they've been slowly letting in new people, I think, but they've been, their servers have been overwhelmed. Um, like, let's see, let's see how many people are online right now. Like there are 17, almost 18,000 people on board game arena right now, 10, more than 10,000 playing actively. That is way more than they had ever seen before two or three weeks ago. Um, like I think board game arena used to have like maybe a thousand people on at a time tops. I don't know that for sure. That's just me guessing, but um, yeah. Let's see here. People saying hello to each other. Uh, hey, Rat, Rat's Tale, I'm not a game designer and I do not, I do not have uh, uh, game design advice. So I think you're, you're just gonna wanna stop asking those questions because that's not what my Q and A is for. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm not a game designer, so I'm not the right person to be asking those types of questions. Um, yeah, I'm kicking butt. I don't know. Oh, oh, I was gonna say, what am I kicking butt at? But you were talking about when I was talking about wingspan. So I get it now. Um, all right, we only have a few more minutes left, friends. So if you have any other questions for me uh, that are not related to game design, since I am not a game designer, uh, feel free to uh, drop them in the chat. Um, and I would greatly appreciate it. Um, so that way I can fill the last couple of minutes of my stream. Um, but yeah, uh, someone earlier was talking about karaoke. We did do karaoke last night on the Board Game Blitz uh, Twitch channel. So if you are not following us on Twitch, you should definitely do that. Um, that's Here, I'll click back over to the game setup so you can see the Board Game Blitz logo down there. Um, you should definitely follow us on Twitch because karaoke. And also, uh, I've streamed a few other things on there. I've streamed some board game arena, the thing you were just watching me play. Um, and uh, I've streamed some Animal Crossing. Uh, is any, please, please tell me some of you in the chat are also playing Animal Crossing. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed right now. It is so much fun. I've never played Animal Crossing before. I never played any of the older games. This is my first Animal Crossing game, the one on the Switch now. And I love it so much. It is great. Um, let's see here. Amanda asks, what is your favorite platform to play games on? That's a really good question, actually. I think Board Game Arena is my favorite. It's not the fanciest looking, but it works really well in real time. It enforces the rules. So if you don't know how to play a game, it helps you along to some degree. Uh, and it's pretty quick. So I think that Board Game Arena is probably my favorite. Um, and, uh, but I did really like playing on Tabletopia, so that was good too, but I think Board Game Arena is my favorite. Um, oh, Halo says, so that's why they can't make an account on Board Game Arena. Yeah, it's, they've been overwhelmed, um, 
And so making new accounts, they've been kind of trying to limit that to some degree. Um, I think you still can, um, but I'm not certain when or how. So I apologize for getting people excited about a website if you can't join it right away. But hopefully, I think if you log in when it's not peak hours, like not middle of the day, you might have a better chance, but I don't know for sure. So uh, Karen says, have any of you put a stuffed bear in your window for families who are going on bear hunts around the world? It's neat that this is happening. I had not heard about this, but that's really cute. I don't think I have any stuffed bears in my house. Uh, I do have my bunny hat, which we haven't put that on today. <laughs> let's, uh, let's put the bunny hat on. <laughs> I can just, it cracks me up every time. <laughs> I don't know why, but I can't, I can't watch the little ears flapping without like completely losing it. It's just so funny. <coughs> Excuse me. That's just me talking for an hour cough. I am not sick. Do not worry. <laughs> it's fine. Um, let's see here. Oh, so the bear hunt thing. Yeah, I had not heard about, but I did hear that a bunch of people are putting back up their Christmas lights kind of just as like a, um, like a fun, neat thing for people to see. Um, and I think that's really cool. I love that people are putting up their Christmas lights and I think that's a neat idea. So, um, yeah, she's, uh, the bear hunt, uh, is a good way to get kids out of the house while maintaining social distancing. That makes sense, Karen. I like it. Amanda asks if I'm going to be doing a Jackbox stream. You know, actually, now that, uh, so I have a capture card for my Switch now, and most of my Jackbox games I have on Switch, I could definitely do a Jackbox stream. That is a really good idea. Uh, I might actually try and make that happen within the next week or so. Um, but if I do that, so it'll be on the Board Game Blitz Twitch channel. That is where that would be. It wouldn't be here. Um, obviously, the Dice Tower is uh, great, um, uh, but I want to make sure I keep my content here mostly board game related. Um, which, speaking of that, if you all did not see last weekend, uh, last Saturday, so eight days ago now, Ambi and I did a live stream here on the Dice Tower of us playing through the original Electronic Mall Madness. <laughs> If you did not watch that stream, you should definitely go check it out. It was a lot of fun um, and I really enjoyed it. So if you haven't seen that, you should go back in the Dice Towers videos and find it. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> um, okay, everybody loves the bunny hat, yeah. I should not leave the house without my bunny hat. I should go on a walk with the bunny hat on and just like walk through my neighborhood, just flap in the ears and hope that someone sees me and enjoys it. <laughs> Um, yeah, the Christmas lights are a neat idea, right? Oops, sorry, that's Board Game Arena making noise. Um, <laughs> that's, ta-da! Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Super Wolfkin says, Drawful 2 is free, like, everywhere at the moment. Uh, cool. I don't think, I want, I don't know if I have Drawful, uh, on the Switch, so I should maybe go download that if I don't have it already. Um, let's see here. Oh, Tears. Uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your first name, says that they have something similar going on with paper Easter eggs posted in windows. That's really cool. I like that. So we're all having a tough time right now, obviously. It's a little bit um, difficult to be cooped up in your house most of the time. Um, and I think that it's really neat that people are finding creative ways to do activities, like maybe making a paper Easter egg, and then spread that joy to others by posting it in their window. That kind of stuff is just really, really neat. Um, and I enjoy it quite a bit. So I, for me, the way I'm trying to spread positivity is through the internet. So, you know, karaoke night last night and Mall Madness a week ago and my bunny hat right now during my Q&A because what else can I do? I'm attempting to put a little bit of joy into the world and I hope you all enjoy that. Um, let's see here. Rat's Tail asks, how many different games do you play in a certain period? I don't quite know what that means. <laughs> uh, like in my life, in a day, in a week, um, in an hour, <laughs> I, I don't know what that means. Uh, I play lots of different games all the time, uh, is the only way I know how to answer that. I love board games and I play a lot of them. So, um, uh, Karen agrees that I should go for a walk with my bunny hat on. I will try and do that at some point. Maybe I should record a video of myself going on a walk and see if I can catch any reactions. <laughs> 
Um, let's see here. Yes, flap the ears as my social distancing greeting. So it's like, oh, hi, neighbor. Hello, neighbor. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, friends. It looks like the questions have slowed down in the chat, and it is 1030 now. Um, I am so grateful for you all joining me. If you can, do me a favor. Don't leave yet. Please don't leave yet. Do me a favor and click the thumbs up button right below the video for me. Um, it helps with the YouTube algorithms to let YouTube know that you all enjoyed the stream and that other people should watch it too. Um, I do this stream once a month on the last Sunday of every month right here on the Dice Tower. Um, I uh, usually just answer questions. Today I played a couple games on Board Game Arena just because I thought that that would be pretty fun. So I hope you all enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed my unboxing of The Crew. That was very fun. Um, and I'm just really grateful for you all joining me. I hope you all um, are having an okay time. I know it's hard to say that everybody's great right now. Um, you know, we're all struggling a little bit, I think. But I hope you all, your families, and you are healthy and safe and practicing good social distancing. And I really appreciate you joining me here this morning. So um, I, uh, I will see you all again Wednesday night. 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern for Dice Tower tonight with Eric Summerer. And until then, uh, have a wonderful day and end of your weekend, friends, and I'll see you soon. Have fun gaming, everyone. Bye.